I said button was out of the I'm sorry. I'm, I'm really so I'm really I'm sorry. Sorry. More than 160,000 riders from around the globe started the Zwift Academy. A four-week cycling challenge on the virtual roads of Zwift. For most, it's a personal quest to build fitness or for fun. But for others, it's a competition with the ultimate prize. Having completed the Zwift Academy in their own homes, the very best have now been selected for the grand final and brought to Spain where just 10 riders remain in the fight to become a professional cyclist. There's no opportunity quite like this. After five gruelling days of intense competition, we will know who will be joining two of the world's best cycling teams, Alpa Sinderkernig and Canyon SRAM. I think the rider needs to be good enough to compete at every race. This is the Zwift Academy Finals. It's going to be super challenging, best person will win. Coming up, the remaining finalists face one last test. Before the judges make their decisions... There are so many other aspects to bike racing as well. We expect more from a, a road to climb And we crown this year's Zwift Academy winners. The winners of the Zwift Academy 2022 are... This is the final. Finalists, 160,000 people started the Zwift Academy and there are just six of you left. But there are only two professional contracts available and today is your last chance to win one of them. You've done amazingly well to get this far and you should be so proud of your achievements. But today, the winner takes it all. Although ciders say that he'll buy you a hot chocolate. That's right, what a consolation prize. Now, what is in store for you on day five? Well. You've got a three hour bike ride with a bit of a hill at the end. We might tell you a bit more when we're out on the road, but go get kitted up and we'll see you downstairs. Doesn't sound too bad actually. It sounds fine, yeah, doesn't it? Three hours, a bit of a hill. So the final climb or the final challenge, we're also fatigued now. I'd probably want to be ahead of Jasper. We're probably the two more explosive riders. Uh, it will be uh, the climb of a lifetime. I need to be at the top uh, uh, first. I think I, I'm going just full, full, full gas. Climbing is my strength. I just want to give my personal best. I don't know what to expect, so I have to attack and get rid of them. That little climb, more accurately, a monster. Of a climb. Yeah, it's the Col de Rates Extreme, okay? It is huge. It's a climb that Tade Pogaccia himself has even used to test his legs on. So we're really going to get a good gauge of how our riders stack up, not just against each other, but also against the best of the best. And don't forget as well that our finalists are exhausted now. This has been a big, big week of competition. And so I think we can almost guarantee ourselves quite a lot of drama and a few upsets out there. Yes, definitely. The ability to tolerate a really tough week was something that really swayed the judges last year, wasn't it? It was indeed. Before we get underway with the final challenge, I've come to catch up with Magnus and Christoph over a coffee. Last day, final opportunity for the contestants to impress you both and land that contract. Magnus, first of all, we've got to talk about yesterday. How are Alex and Chiara, do you think, ahead of the final challenge? Um, Chiara kind of looks okay. Um, yes, she took a, a hit on the knee um, and her hand is a bit swollen, but apart from that, she seems to have come off relatively lightly from that, that, that crash. Um, Alex, on the other hand, is struggling uh, quite a lot with her hand. There was a big cut um, in that one that needed to be looked at um, at the hospital. So, um, yeah, it's not, it's not ideal for her. No, so she's going to have a tough day today, but I guess she would anyway, right? Because it's not necessarily going to suit her attributes. No, it's not. Um, you know, she climbs well, but she's not a pure climber. Um, so yeah, it's going to be a, a, a very difficult day, I think, for her to uh, uh, to be challenging. Yeah. And what about you, Christoph? Because 
<clears throat> you and other Christophe have selected a lot of different riders as your riders of the day over the course of the week. But again, they've got different attributes, haven't they? So what, what have they got to do to impress you today? Uh, actually, since the points race, we miss a bit uh, real fighting, fighting spirit. We want to see them really fighting until the end. Yeah. to have their own personal bests, because that is also what cycling is about, that they can't all be the winner in the end, but you need, you need guys, you need a team, and if everyone in the team just does his personal best, that's the way you get the forest as a team. Probably Luca will smash it, because it's a steeper climb, he is the real climber of it, uh, but we are really looking how long can they hold the wheel, and if they do it 500 meters longer, then expect it, then we are happy. Magnus, I know you've been really looking forward to seeing how they perform on the final day. Are you expecting anyone to crack today? Now, based on what I've seen from, from the riders we have here, um, they all seem to really, really want this and they keep on fighting to, to the end. Um, so I'm not really expecting anyone to lay down and sort of accept defeat even on the climb here. And, like Christoph was just saying, we're really looking for that person to to go deep, to to push themselves. Um, you know, you know, the limit isn't really out there. It's what you set it to be. Whether they're first or last up to up to the top of the mountain, it's just, you know, are they in the pile on the floor as they finish? If the answer is yes, then I'd be happy with that. Okay. I kind of don't really want to see that happen, but <laughs> let's go find out. Yeah. As I said, the final challenge is a three-hour ride with a little hill at the end, which is not totally inaccurate. However, when they get to the base of this climb, they're going to have to race up it, head to head. For the first 15 minutes, they'll be paced by the pros before turning onto a steep, narrow and at times gravel section of road where they'll duke it out for the win. First one to the top, check the honours. Yeah, on top of one of the most popular climbs here, the Col de Rats, you have um, an extra part, which we call the Super Rats. It's a small road that most of cyclists that I know uh, don't take regularly, but yeah, for me, it's, I love to ride it because it's so hard, you have to push uh, really hard to get up there. So it's free training, if I can say it like this, and uh, the view on top is amazing, but yeah, it's, um, it's a rather hard climb. There are gradients of over 20% in this final climb, so the riders are going to have to be really powerful and fresh as possible too. Whew. It's just super important that you don't blow your engine because yeah, if you go a bit too fast in the beginning, you'll pay the price and you lose a lot of time. Yeah. Personally, I've never been very confident to just like reflect back on this. That, that would give me so much confidence moving forward and just believing that I can achieve what I want to achieve. I know that I'm 37 years old and I'm not so young to, to, be, to start to be a pro. If I got a pro contract, uh, uh, I will change my whole life. I realized that I'm really enjoying cycling and racing and I, that's what I really want to do in future really proud to be here and to show what I'm capable of. Right, final challenge. We're gonna go up the Col de Rats. The pros are gonna set the pace on the early parts of, of the climb. When we get to the cafe, with about um, well, right at the top, the original top, you guys are gonna continue. From there on, it's all the way to the very, very top of the station. And that's free race for you guys to go all the way to the top. Here we go then, the final challenge of the Zwift Academy 2022. We know how tough this is, and it's made even harder by four pro cyclists setting a fearsome tempo. Magnus and Beth have asked their pros to ride at 4.5 watts per kilo, but this looks faster than that. I think Elise Shabby is putting in one final test of her own here, and why not? 
Pro Racing is unpredictable. Impressive riding from Alex and Chiara with those injuries from yesterday. Knowing what we know from the last four days, you would think, though, that it's Chiara who's the most comfortable right now. We are nearing the moment where the race is really on. We are high up on the climb, and they will know that it's about to get really tough. Here we go then, we are turning off the main road and it's time for the finalists to let rip. And it's Chiara who goes. This is a huge attack. Bear in mind, she has never seen this climb before and she's flying straight into the gravel section, but not backing off for a moment. Neela is chasing hard though. That is not much of a gap at this stage. She's putting up a great fight, digging deep, but this climb is so tough that there's a risk of simply going too hard early on and then blowing up later. I think this is a climb that really suits Kiara's style of riding as well because she loves being out of the saddle for, for long periods of time. Kiara needs to keep applying the pressure. She must dominate this challenge to really impress the judges. It looks dramatic, it looks amazing. I mean, in, it's, in a race environment, I mean, is it's it fast a, enough? <laughs> question, uh, that's a big question. That is a reasonable gap now though. She is flying up this climb, averaging 4.7 watts per kilo. Like Chiara is definitely a, a very, very you know, impressive climber, there's no question about that, but I think Neil is still, still fighting in the game. Here comes Alex now, she is fighting hard, down but not out. She's not a climber, so she just needs to keep Chiara within touching distance to do enough to impress the judges. This looks disastrous for Neela though. She's come to a stop. Jason Chiara has proved to be too big a risk and the gradient of 20% here is just too much to allow her to recover, exactly as Van der Poel had warned. And look, Alex now goes past Neela. She's kept fighting and is still in the mix. So it's good to say she's a fighter though, is she? Oh yeah. Yeah, it's a testament, isn't it? I mean, she's been riding one-handed half of the time, so... It's a two-horse race now, and the climber Chiara needs to show that she's world-class in this terrain. She must fly up the last few switchbacks. Chiara crosses the line in 14.05, the fastest time ever up this climb, but the countdown to Alex now starts. Did you, did you expect to stay away for it all? Uh, yes, maybe yes, because I know that the climbs are my favorite path, you know, so I'm happy. Good, you should be. Here comes Alex, two minutes and 27 seconds later. Has she done enough to impress the judges? crosses the line in third. She will be glad she's finished, but her disappointment is clear to see. This is not the final she'll have been hoping for. It was just the weather maybe. It's hot. It's really warm. You absolutely smashed it. You're so proud of yourself. <laughs> yeah, I just kept thinking like, this is it, this is it of the week. Yeah. Yeah, this is what we're going to finish with. So yeah. if I can just try my best. That's all I can do at the moment in my, in my state. Yeah, I think it's fair to say you definitely did. Yeah. You should be really proud of yourself.
Beth and Magnus, the climb did not disappoint. That looked savage, but it's kind of we said, Kiara looked like she kind of bossed it. Beth, what do you think? Yeah, you could see it was clearly her area. I think she was quite happy when she <laughs> looked up and saw the steepness of it. I'm sure she thought, okay, this is my time to try and shine. So yeah, it was a very strong ride. Neela looked pretty crestfallen when she came back down. It feels like, I don't know, she maybe wanted more from herself, do you think, today? Yeah, I think possibly so, yeah. Um, you know, it's, it's always difficult when you're getting into the final days of, of this kind of uh, program where, you know, we're testing them every day, uh, both, both physically, mentally, uh, in every possible way we can with all the cameras around and, and so on and so on. That's, that's hard for them. And sometimes, you know, the stress takes, takes it out on you. Lastly, Alex. For me, it was definitely a, a really impressive ride. I mean, we could see already early on on the climb that she was, you know, riding one hander trying to sort of, yeah, she couldn't stand up properly, um, but she kept on fighting and fighting. And, you know, that's, I like to see stuff like that. It's now time for the men. Lucas, Jesper and Luca have just 9.8 kilometers of riding left in the Zwift Academy finals. All of it is uphill. I think looking back on this, it will be, yeah, I'll look back on it as a great experience, knowing I've given it my best. It can be the start of, of, an, of a new chapter in my life. I had a taste of the professional world and a taste of my dream. Team Alpecin de Koenig line it out with Maurice Ballastad starting it off. World Mountain Bike Marathon champion Sam Gaze is next, keeping the tempo high. Then World Gravel champion Jani Vermeesh. The finalists are still looking composed, but again, just like with the women's race, the pace here looks significantly hotter than the five watts per kilo the pros were instructed to ride at. In the wheels, Jason Osborne is holding 420 watts. The former Olympic rower was the first ever UCI eSports world champion, taking the win on Zwift in 2020, if you remember. It looks like that tempo has done some damage and the guys are starting the final section of climb already spread across the mountain. With Luca charging to the fore. He is in his element, but his competition here are sprinters, so he still needs to produce a performance that will convince the judges that he has got what it takes to climb with the best in the pro peloton. And Jesper is not giving up. He is holding Luca at a respectable distance, but is he gonna suffer the same fate as Neela before him? These upper slopes are unforgiving. Luca looks to be pedaling with ease. This is something of a masterclass, spinning at 6.3 watts per kilo. Jesper is still just in sight though, a fantastic performance from yesterday's rider of the day. Unlike Luca, this is not his speciality, so he can impress the judges by hanging in there, saving his sprint for another day. Watts of Lucas, he appears to have approached this in a very different way, pacing his effort carefully. In fact, he looks now to be closing in on Jesper. Luca approaches the final corner. His win on this climb is not in doubt. He has made this fierce ascent look easy. But his time up it? 11 minutes 37. That's one minute down on Tade Pogacar's best. 
The question is, though, has Luca given it everything? You don't actually seem that out of breath. Oh, they manage it, pace it, okay. You paced it well. Yeah, <laughs> kind of. Yeah, like, probably <laughs> the guys were pushing a bit too high. So we were uh, in two. I did my best, I think I did it well. So let's see the judges what uh, decide. Further down the climb, and Lucas has indeed caught Jesper, which creates an interesting dynamic. Our two sprinters are now neck and neck. It's going to be a tough decision for our judges. Lucas crosses the line in second. A great ride, and one to be happy about. I would have liked to hold on to the lead out, mm -hmm. but I was just I was struggling too much. Yeah, that was an absolute yeah. savage climb. Yeah. Do you want to do it again? No. <laughs> I know for sure it's my last chance, you know, it's, it's my only chance, my, my last chance after so many years of crashing, disappointment and all. <sighs> Luca just demolished that, didn't he? I guess, were you expecting it? Yes, we were expecting it, but uh, we were not expecting that the others would be dropped uh, so fast or so soon. But in the end, we checked also the our riders did also not uh, exactly what was asked. So it went a bit too fast from the <laughs> beginning. So has Luca impressed enough as a climber today to warrant consideration? I mean, has he gone fast enough, do you think? Uh, we still need to wait a bit until we really see the the time that he did here and also the power that he managed. Um, we also need the exact power a bit of our lead out guys. Um, so we need to wait till we have the complete picture. Okay, so a little bit more data needed before yes. you guys can make your decision, but we'll find out later on. Yep. Okay, thanks guys. See you back Thank later. You. Okay, folks, this is the big one, isn't it? So no riders of the day today. You are deciding who is gonna be riding for your respective teams next season, which is pretty exciting, but it does feel like this is even more important than usual. Kiara, I guess, was odds-on favorite to win today. But my question to you is, did she ride fast enough up that climb in order to be a climber in the World Tour? I mean, it was, she was rode fast up there, there's no question about that, but is it fast enough to be going straight into the World Tour Peloton and be at the very, very front end of, of the competition? Um, yeah, that's, that's a question for me that I, I'm not sure. Okay, how much room to grow do you think she has, Bear? Kiara definitely has room to progress and improve. She hasn't been cycling that long, and you can see that clearly she's a talented a climber, especially. So, and skills-wise, she was really good uh, in our group, so, I, f I feel like she does have some room for progression. And what about Neela then, Beth? Because she, well, I don't know how to describe it. She stopped, didn't she? With two hairpins to go. Do you know why? I think she was, she really just went so deep. I mean, the pace was hard. And then on the 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 final climb, when Kiara really just, you know, attacked it, I think Neela really tried to go with. And I think she suffered for that at one point. Um, you know, she was really disappointed after that she couldn't sort of keep going and keep sort of suffering and fighting through, but sometimes that just happens. You don't often see that in the World Tour, but then I guess that was, that was an extreme climb, wasn't it? It's not called Cold Rats Extreme for nothing. Yeah, absolutely. And maybe it would be a different scenario if you really were in a race, you know, in that situation. I mean, she was really was so close to the end, which I think she didn't realise. So usually you would know that there was only, you know, one more hairpin to go. Okay, and Magnus, what about Alex then? Because she, has not come across as a climber this week, but she's clearly got a great sprint, great one to six minute power. Yep. Did she do enough up that climb with her handicap today, <laughs> we've got to say, <laughs> yeah. you know, could she, could she get through World Tour races to be able to do a job when she's needed to do it? So I think if you start looking at the overall picture of Alex, she's the one with the most racing experience. Um, she's 
not that far off if we start looking at watts per kilo um, so there is still a lot of room for improvement there I think as well in terms of that that bigger engine to to get us off over that um, but yeah it, she's definitely some way behind Chiara in terms of that, that pure natural ability to go uphill but there are so many other aspects to bike racing as well so that's where we I guess we've, we've got to work out what we need yeah and you told us this morning that you wanted to see your riders fighting i think we saw that from all three of them today didn't we? <laughs> yeah no one disappointed when it came to effort no definitely not i mean um nearly went that deep that she basically just saw stars and almost felt like she was about to faint um alex i think she rode the first half of that climb one-handed because her hand was hurting that badly so it was only on the final part where she decided that you know I really got to commit to this to get up it and when she got to the top she was completely spent as well so she went full gas regardless of the pain that she had in the, from her injuries and obviously Chiara managed to sustain the effort even though she also was, has been quite sore from uh, you know took quite a big hit on her knee um, so yeah they've all been fighting uh, to the death for this and um, it's really nice to see and impressive that they they wanted this badly yeah so our female contestants have left it all out there no questions asked guys that was something that you were talking about this morning as well wanting to see fighting spirit from your riders how do you think they fared today should we start with Jasper yeah Jasper was one of the guys who uh, fought pretty long uh, he tried to follow Luca on Colderats as long as he could um, so on that point he did uh, he did quite okay I guess um, I just think the guys um, when you have to watch or feel your own subjective feeling on the lead out tempo that the pro riders were doing and you have some kind of expectation in your head okay uh, five watts a kilo should feel this way and if it then feels harder it's maybe just yeah, hard to accept and that's where they where, where uh, Jasper and also maybe Lucas just lost it a bit. So let's talk about Luca then because he did go up there quickly certainly he put a lot of time into Jasper and Lucas but again I suppose a little bit like we were talking about with Chiara did he go up there fast enough to be a climber at Alps in the Then he has to improve from what we saw on the climb that was not enough um, maybe there is room for improvement, but f from what he did now, uh, that was not enough. It's like Christoph says, I think we still have a few questions. Um, pure on the numbers, before Luca came to the final, um, he showed us already some strong numbers, some numbers that are somewhere around uh, top climbers on the World Tour level. His day one with the inside test, he confirmed that uh, all his historic numbers before coming uh, into the competition. But from then on, actually, we, we never saw any top numbers anymore, which we think of, okay, yeah, listen, this uh, can be top 10, top 20 in, in, in uh, climbing in, in a World Tour bunch. Yeah, so or, or otherwise he did it tactically within this competition very well by just going through the days safe energy don't kill himself on day three by showing us uh, the world and then maybe crash on day four whatever uh, physically or mentally but that are still a few questions because the 5.7 5.8 watts a kilo in, in the the last half of colder rods where they really raced each other we expect more from a, a world tour climber you need to go and make him do it again tomorrow, don't you? Hold the rats <laughs> extreme and really try hard this time. You certainly saw effort, I think, from Jasper today, which is what you wanted. Questions still over Luca as to his effort levels today. And it seems like you have an equally difficult decision on your hands. You've got riders with very different specialities. Yeah. And I suppose ultimately it's who Canyon SRAM needs, right? What type of rider? Okay, well, you need to go away and make those decisions and then we'll tell the riders very soon indeed.
finalists. This has been an incredible week of competition, so thank you. To get here was an achievement in itself, and so regardless of the results tonight, we hope that you all leave with some really special memories and having made the most of every experience, whether that's riding with the pros or getting feedback from the pro team judges. Of course, though, that's not why you're here. You want that professional cycling contract. Yeah, now you have all performed brilliantly. You've all impressed the judges in different ways, but as you well know, there are only two contracts available. One for Canyon SRAM and one for Alpes Interkernic. Two life-changing opportunities for two outstanding cyclists. Yeah, now you have not made this easy. The judges have been deliberating long and hard, but they have come to their decisions. The winners of the Zwift Academy 2022 Ah. Luca and Alex, congratulations! Yes. Well done, both. Come on, guys, break it out. Well done, Alex. Meet your new team. Luca, meet your new team. I'm, I'm happy we could have party tonight. I'm really happy for Luca. He deserves it. Being the winner of Swift Academy is really, really special and I can just be really proud of myself for how far I've come. Winning Swift Academy obviously is a big thing, it's a life-changing opportunity and I will try to give my best to make it count. What a week it has been. Zwift Academy 2022 has come to an end. But was that the results you were expecting? Let us know down in that comment section below. That's right. Before we go, we want to say a few big thank yous. Firstly to Zwift for making this all happen. 160,000 of you entered the Academy. I think this is the only platform where you could have a meaningful competition like this, and it's fantastic that they run it. Also, I want to say a big thank you to the crew here. There's a lot of them that have brought you these amazing images and the high drama as well, so thank you to all of them. Also, a big thank you to all the pro teams, the staff, the riders, and of course, the Zwift Academy finalists for giving it their all this week. Right, to the bar? Yeah, go on. I think we deserve it. Yeah. Um, is there any chance you could, you could bring Matthew Van Der and Elise Shabby with you? Such a loser, Si. Such no. a loser. No, I know, but seriously. No, I know. Can you stop just it. drop them a WhatsApp? No. 